Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Headstrong Podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Mills Walden. I'm super excited because we have a special guest that I've been trying to get on here for a little while. I've been watching her and seeing her kind of move and shake. And this lady is awesome. So welcome to the show, Macy. How are you? Thank you. I'm so blessed, honestly. <laughs> you really are. So talk to me a little bit about you for those that maybe don't know you don't know your background don't know your story kind of give us that like thirty thousand foot view of you okay um well i'm from south florida i'm born and raised i'm 23 years old and um basically right now i run a entertainment platform slash fashion fashion brand um where we produce content we host parties and we like and we just bring entertainment to any type of function um so I started the, my business uh, 2019 and it happened like mid uh, pandemic. And I just started with designing based on like my lifestyle, like whether I was like working out a lot or I was dancing a lot, I kind of just started making clothes for myself. And then um, I started to tap into like my, my talents of dancing and acting and just producing visuals in all and it kind of transformed into this entertainment platform that we are now yeah i've seen a lot of the different campaigns that you've done and they're so creative like where do you get the ideas for some of your concepts like they've been so cool to kind of see them evolve over time Ah, uh, thank you well mostly i pull from my real life of what i'm going through what I'm doing a lot at the moment. If I'm like working out a lot, it'll go into fitness. If I'm dancing a lot, we'll do a little bit more graphic tees. We'll do like dance wear. And then um, if I, it just depends on my life, but also I can't take full credit because I have a team. I have a, I have my dancers, but then I also have my creative team and like my producing team of about five people. And we all kind of just sit in a room for eight hours or however many hours we need to. And we'll just go back and forth with concepts and ideas. And then it, it we always start with like a little seed and it sprouts to this huge uh, campaign, like force of a campaign. So I, that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. Talk to, talk to the listeners kind of about like what those brainstorming sessions are like. Is it kind of like you're in a room, you're there for a long period of time and everybody's just like throwing ideas out and people are like, nah, that's not cool. Or like, yeah, that's awesome. Like kind of what happens? You know, it's... The gist of it, it all kind of happens the same way, whether we're at a restaurant or we're like in my um, my producer's uh, in her office. Uh, and it's like we're really just a small, intimate room. We have um, some food, like some pizza, maybe some beer, and then we'll chill out for 30 minutes. Everyone's on their laptop. We'll pull up images or videos that we are inspired by at the moment. We always have kind of the general gist of the idea. We'll always have our graphic designer, someone that's making our merch. We kind of have literally everyone involved in the process there. Um, and then we'll bring up our, our, the target goal of what we're inspired by. And then we kind of flip it into our own uh, type of way. For example, we brought a BMW in our last uh, capsule. And we were just, that's basically how it went. We were just watching a lot of visuals and images and and bringing out ideas for, for ourselves it's really crazy and then someone's like i don't know about this but what you guys think of this like a crazy idea <laughs> and then we kind of just go with it i never really like to shoot any idea down the the more kind of weird the better to me so yeah like Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that's really cool. I think it's helpful for people to kind of understand what that process looks like, because I'm sure a lot of our listeners, they have ideas, they want to start something, but they don't know kind of even how to go about that process. So since you're, you know, you started this business kind of in the beginning of the pandemic, and there was a lot going on, what advice would you give like women who are considering starting their own business, and maybe they're a little bit afraid to take that leap? Right. What I would say is the thing that helped me out the most is building a team. Um, I, I believe in teamwork so much. Like I, I love to delegate because then I can just, I can perform at my top, you know, performance rather than having to worry about creating the graphics and the marketing and team management, like my community management. It's just, it's a lot of moving pieces. And, um, and you'll start with one 
team member that supports you and then you'll go to three and then you go to five and it, it it'll expand slowly but surely but as you need add people on don't try to take on everything for yourself because the workload will come so it's better to 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 be organized with with delegating rather than being like so busy with all the minuscule minuscule tasks of like all the emails <laughs> you know you can really have someone to do that for you but getting a really supportive team that also strongly believes in your vision mm. is and you have to believe in your vision as well like you have to be the guiding light at all times because if you're not really confident in what you want to do then people can pick up on it and then sometimes they, they'll motivate you to push forward but sometimes it can demotivate them so just being strong in your vision and having a support system like team okay no that's really good as far as like getting a team with like your experience, did you know everybody on your team beforehand or did you like source out people or was it like a combination of both? Um, so for my first uh, <clears throat> team, I, I mostly through networking. I go out a lot and it's, it seems like I'm always out, but I'm ready to meet who I need to meet at any point in time because I go to a lot of creative events. Sometimes I don't meet anyone. Sometimes I'll have fun and sometimes I'll meet someone without the intention of working together, but then down the line, we'll work together. Um, my first, I had a different uh, management at first and that came through just networking as well. And and another thing is knowing when to let go of like, you know, a process or mm. or any type of organization that you have in, um, in like your business. Cause sometimes it doesn't work, but you're holding on to it cause it's familiar. So I had to really reconstruct my whole team and that came from just word of mouth really. So it started with just my cre uh, my creative manager. Her name was Kat, she's so awesome. And uh, and from there, we just started picking up there. How I recruited my dancers, I did an open call. And then um, I'm just open to people with talent that just wanna work. I, I got most of the time, if, if projects align with the vision of the brand and we have the like capability and time to, I'll always say yes to a project if it's, you know, if it's worth it. Okay. No, that really makes sense. I kind of want to peel back the layers though, and get to kind of the, the before story. I've, you know, been watching your, your content on Instagram for a while now. I'm like obsessed. The one video that got me like hooked is when you did that, like Chris Brown dance and like, it was super cool. Yeah, that, that was, <laughs> that was so awesome. Like, Talk to me about how dance is like a pivotal part of your life and how you kind of got into it and where do you see it going in the future? Yeah, that particular video, no one really knew I could dance. Like as an adult, you know, like, <laughs> like, they're like, oh yeah, Mason, she can dance. But as I like was in like high school and college, I kind of like was a little shy with it. But then I was like, you know what, whatever. I got rhythm, so I'm going to do what I do. <laughs> but as an adult, they're like, damn, Mason got moves. <laughs> But literally my whole life, I've been a dancer. And that started from like my grandma. Mm. She used to have these family parties at her house. And she had this one friend and he used to dance his butt off. We used to dance through the whole night. And from old school music like Michael Jackson and James Brown a lot, um, a lot of old school music at her house all the time to this day. And so that's where my dancing started. And then I got into a production company called Encore Performing Arts. And mm. I was, um, oh, basically open shows with, with, um, with my friend. And yeah, that, that's where I got a lot of my training. And then I, I did a few formal classes, like, like the, the jazz and, um, and ballet. Mm. I didn't do that for long, though. It just was something that my mom told me I was interested in. But I was best in like informal settings. So there was that. And now as an adult, I just, it's really like my passion to just move and dance, whether, you know, that's really what I love to do. So I'm like, I don't want to neglect it because it's not like a path often taken, you know? No, for sure. And I feel like it's such like a important part of your brand today. Like, I feel like with everything you put out, there's always like, it's always in movement and it makes awesome. it so like, it, you just can't stop watching. Like that's how yeah. I'm like glued to it. So <laughs> is that like... When you're um, clearly it's because you're like the creative like director of everything like you're really intentional about doing that with everything that you put out there kind of talk to me about your process with as far as like the the dance process or yeah 
uh, both visuals, dance. It's just so good. <laughs> yeah, as far as like the dancing, I love to bring in different choreographers. Um, and I want to tap into different styles. So we'll sometimes we'll do like theater style. Right now we lean towards hip, hip hop. We do, we've done like dance hall. But into our next project, which we are like working on like currently, we'll be tapping into um, a lot more jazz, ballet, and theater, and just like classical movements with like a twist of like uh, our funky, you know, creativity. So I, I love, I think, I think my favorite part about having a brand is the collaboration. So we'll collaborate with, with graphic designers, fashion designers, but then also choreographers. And I just want to give them the freedom and the platform to show what, what's in their heart. And I'm here as their like canvas to like bring it out. So that's, that's really how we go about it. I give people a lot of freedom. And then I, I say, okay, is, is this like genuine? Is it true? Is it original? And, and yeah, and is it timeless or is it just for the moment? So I try to pay attention to that a lot. No, I think that's awesome. It's so important to, to pay attention to all of those things. When you yeah. were saying that, yeah, like when you were saying that, it was making me think of just how I've seen you throughout the last couple of months, which you've been putting out there. And I noticed that you're so confident in your delivery, in your demeanor, and just overall, where does this internal and external confidence come from? And what advice would you give our listeners who don't necessarily always feel their best or feel so confident? You know what? I think my mom, she would grown up, she was just so ready and strong, like for any moment in time. And and I I honestly think I'm just a really happy girl and I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I actually look forward to it and I look forward to criticism sometimes. I love love and I love I like the support. And equally on the other side, I love the criticism because I Here's like a little secret, like to how I'm like a little calm. <laughs> yeah, this is like a little secret here. When you're putting out content that is really genuinely from your heart and a lot of people are involved with it, uh, you're gonna, some people, some people are really gonna like it and some people are really not gonna like it. And I love both responses. As long as I can sway the audience one way or the other, I love it. If I get no response, if you're not pulled in any direction by it, if you're not, if you just feel neutral about it, that's what I don't like. So it's it's like the 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 love or the hate it, it it's neither neither like build me up. I have to build myself up enough to to be able to take both of them. So, but that's a little thing. As long as I as long as I sway like my viewer to love it or hate it, I'm fine with that because I got something out of you. I pulled some type of I evoked something out of you, and I'll take it. <laughs> No, I love that. That's yeah, super that's cool. Like, yeah, that's like a little, you know, I, I only, I rarely tell people that because it sounds weird. Sometimes people can't understand what that means, but it's the truth for me. Yeah, no, and, and you're <laughs> like living within your truth and that's huge and pulling people to make some type of a reaction is the best because that's going to get them to either be obsessed with what you're doing or be like, wait, what is she like? I don't know. I can't see yeah, people yeah, not liking it. Or but. Like, well, I just don't understand this girl. Like, that's like, I love it. I love that so much. But like that, honestly, the, the, the confidence comes from really, I just love entertaining and mm. it makes me my happiest. And I know that we always put our like 110% best foot forward whenever we're creating. Oh, here comes my baby. Sylvie. Oh. She's over. <laughs> yes, I was wanting to get into. I, I was looking at her little toys behind you. I was like, I think she'll make a, a special appearance. I'm gonna hide it a little bit, my <laughs> No, it's fine. I love it. So let's dive into her a little bit. You are a amazing mom to a beautiful girl, and you know that is super inspiring too. Because you know you're young, you're vibrant, but you're doing so many things, and you have so many like big goals you're trying to accomplish. Can you talk to me about like, how does your daughter push you and motivate you? And like, what is it like to have to balance all of that? Cause I'm sure people are like, how does she do all of this? Yeah. All the time. I'm going to start with definitely I'm a, I have strong faith in God. I pray a lot and I kind of just take a lot of things one step at a, at a time. Cause there's like so much things on my task list from just 
managing her, managing my, my family, and then the business, and then my personal self and friends. Um, I really just take it one thing at a time. I do not stress out about things. Yeah. I can do one thing right now and then I move on to the next. And I'm gonna enjoy my way the whole time. <laughs> like, you know, like like I just don't get stressed. Like I don't subscribe to stress at all. It's just so mm. not healthy. But definitely my family is so helpful. Um I have a, her dad is super supportive as well. Um, she's awesome in herself. She's a great baby. So, uh, yeah, as far as like just making time, mm, just one step at a time. It does get tough, but one thing at a time, that's all you can do. And the slow, I'm fine with slow progress. I don't mind that. Yeah. You mentioned one thing that I feel like a lot of the listeners can, can really relate to, but I think like maybe you have some tips around it. You talked about like, you do not like deal with stress. You don't let yourself get stressed. How do you prevent that? Because there's so many people and most people get super stressed. They let their stress impact them in all areas. What are some things that you do to like, not allow yourself to be stressed in stressful times? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Trust me. I do not subscribe to it. Not saying that I don't get stressed. Sometimes your body, your mind, you can't help it because it's just sometimes emotions are overwhelming so anytime I can consciously like you know say listen I'm gonna be for example I'm gonna give you like a perfect perfect example me and my creative director we are managing a lot of stuff at the same time but generally like the same amount on the plate and she's the type that is just like you know really scheduled on it and I'm like girl relax listen we're gonna do this right now gonna enjoy it and then we'll move on to the next like I I try to just always remember that the stress that I have is good stress like I'm, I'm super blessed and I'm grateful for my life so I'd rather have the stress that I have than deal with any other type and also just seeing like just my own family sometimes it's it really takes a toll on their health and their happiness and well-being so I just make the conscious effort to just enjoy my moment Okay. No, that's really helpful. I think that a lot of people can, can take that and resonate with it. Um, I want to kind of ask you because, you know, with everything that you have going on, there's so much, but I'm sure there's been time. Oh, okay. Let me pause. So I kind of wanted to, to ask you something because, you know, with everything that you have going on, you know, it's always, important to look at all the successes and the wins, but we all know as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, it's not always uphill. Can you talk about maybe like an obstacle that you may have had to overcome or maybe some adversity that you faced throughout your journey and kind of how you kind of got through that? I think like uh, some, some of the, uh, just having super high expectations that don't always meet, but it's still being a win and framing my like framing my mindset to see stuff as a win, even when it doesn't meet my expectation. For example, um, like the first couple things I, ooh, girl, she did not find another way up in here. Okay. <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> so, um, for example, like when you have expectations to sell out in like a certain amount of time, you're like, okay, I'll calculate this type of profit and this type of expectations, or I wanna pull out this type of crowd to an event or I need to have a performance time right at this time, but then it gets pushed back for about two hours. There's a lot of things that come up. Um, but so maybe I won't sell it out a hundred percent within like a time frame, but I'll sell maybe 65% of my inventory or 70%. And that's still great. Like I still value each and every customer, um, even though I didn't meet like the mark in the expected time frame. I still have to just, it's all a part of growth, you know, like I try to limit my expectations, but I wouldn't have targeted goals at all times, but sometimes when they don't hit the targets, but you know that you did all that you could, it, you just have to, that's when loving what you do comes into it. And that's how you keep pushing forward. Cause if you don't really love it and you're not getting the results that you want to see, it's easy to quit. So yeah, no, just, just always doing stuff from, from my heart. Okay. No, that's really helpful because 
a lot of people are going to experience ups and downs when they're starting a business or they're trying to do something or put something out there. And it's not always going to be, you know, successes and praise. Like it's kind of like this throughout the process and people kind of take that for granted until they're in it. So I kind of wanted to kind of see how you wrap your head around it. Do you, um, you know, like, like the, the fun part of, um, that's the fun part of like the whole business, like, uh, the ups and downs. I love, like, for example, if we're, if we have a, if we have a performance or we have to record something, uh, the rehearsals are my favorite part of it. Like, I just love rehearsing and getting together with the team, like twice a week. And the performance is cool too. I love that part, but it's like the, it's like the stuff that comes with it. And then we have to get all this, like, we have to do all the shopping. Like, that's so much fun to me. Cause like, I love spending time with like my team. So yeah, like the end is all, it always makes me sad when we have, when we're done with the project. I'm, sometimes I'm happy, you know? <laughs> I don't know how we did this, but we did it. But sometimes I'm like, oh, it's over now, you know, but <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah, like, okay. you're, you're a type of person who like loves like the journey and you mm-hmm. love like getting to it. And then once you like hit the mark, you're like, okay, I want another opportunity to like go through another like journey and the growth to get to that point. Cause that's like yeah. the part that's the most fun. Once I know what I'm doing and I'm into a concept and I and we have like the clear vision, I love that part. I think my least favorite part is like the starting and it's like, oh, we have to figure it all out over again. Like, oh Lord, but we always do. So I don't, you know, I don't get too worried, but I really do love the journey. It's, it's the most fun part. That's where we laugh the most. So, and I love laughing. So yeah. <laughs> That's I really love that. Most fun to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I totally love that. Are there any like people that you that like inspire you or anybody that like you listen to, like books you read or anything that like um, has really helped you kind of get to this point? Um, I'm a super visual person, so I think um, I have a couple different inspirations. Uh, I'm gonna start with my top two, which like like uh, my star goal would be Beyonce and Rihanna. I love how they incorporate their entertainment with fashion, especially Rihanna. She's killing it with Savage Expectations. I love Tiana Taylor. I love her so much. I love Zendaya. I love her as an actress and how she can really transform into roles. Um, as far as fashion. June Ambrose, she's amazing. I'm just naming kind of women right now. Mm-hmm. Um, let me think, who else? There's there's a lot of them, but I'm kind of thinking off the top of my head. Uh, I Oh, number one, Issa Rae. Love Issa. her so much. Uh, that's, that's my, I would love to work with her one day, but right now I'm just put, building my portfolio to one day reach that goal. And um, yeah. Well, you'll do it because I don't know if you're big on this too, but like putting stuff out there into the universe, saying it out loud and stuff like helps things get together. And, you know, I could totally see you working with her. When you were speaking about all those people, I was like, I could see you collaborating with Tiana Taylor easily. Yes. Just from kind of all of like, she's such an amazing artist. And when I was doing your intro before we talk, um, I ended like kind of saying like the art, like artist Macy, because you have like so many different aspects yeah. of what you're doing. Oh no, <laughs> she's <kind Yeah>. of... <laughs> she needs her own show. Time to get her on YouTube. there we go. Yes. Okay. We are back. Um, okay. Yeah. So I love that you were naming all of those amazing female, um, inspirations. Are there any male inspirations that you have also? I'm sure there is. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Um, I always start from the top, start from the top down. Um, Michael Jackson, I love his storytelling performance. I love every, I, I, I used to study him when I was younger. So I love him. I love, oh my, this is so hard. You know, I need to think about these things beforehand. You know, my inspirations, let me think. Mm. Or like, you know, maybe you read a book or something and it was like, it really resonated. Or I don't know if you're like big on 
um, different like visionaries and stuff. I'm trying to understand like yeah. how your whole, like you're being inspired, like overall. Um, you know, I have all of these right in my head. Let me think. Can we pause here so I can look up a few and then name them? <laughs> So okay. I think um, some of my favorite male inspirations, starting with Michael Jackson, he's amazing. I, I really love his music videos, how they kind of turn into like short films. And uh, I kind of want to get into that with my own stuff as well. And we even recreated Thriller. That was the, the a biggest dream come, through, come true for me. Um, I love uh, Tyler, the creator as well. Some of his newer work, he's really intentional about his design. And just every little small detail about his about his new fragrance and brand. I love that a lot. Even like his color palette, he's really consistent with storytelling. Um, I love Tory Lanez as well as an artist, very inspirational. I met him a couple of times and he's just, he's a really talented individual. And mm -hmm. lastly, rest in peace, uh, Virgil Abloh. He is one of my hugest inspirations and I have like I have a lot of his books and his studies and I watch his interviews all the time just because I like the way his thought process and how free he is with his creativity and like, you know, and just honing like his leadership skills. Yo, know, for sure. You named a lot of really great people there. I think like the common, the commonality between all of them is like the storytelling that they do within their yeah. art and you being like the creative director and the storyteller of your brand. Like I'm sure you're yeah. tapping into all of that good stuff which is yes. super, super cool. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Storytelling is one. Of, that's the, that's like the, the end goal for all of it is telling different stories from different perspectives and walks of life, because we're all a little, we're all a little bit more alike than different. So yeah. just, you know, finding like the, 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 the through line between my story and, you know, someone else that can relate. That's, that's the really fun part of it. And I, I want to ask you this too. Do you love like being behind the camera and doing like the shooting part of it too? Or do you more so like, or do you like both sides of it? I, I enjoy both right now. I like being in front um, because I can get what I want. Like, so once I become like, once I can direct better, uh, I feel more comfortable behind the scenes, but at the moment I can pull exactly what I want for myself. So I love being in front of the camera, but I will eventually love being behind the camera as well. I, it's just, I can only do one thing at a time. I can't do both at the, yet. Soon I will be, but being behind the camera is just as fun because I have a certain eye for like, for a certain scene, how things can be set up or camera movement and transitions. I have a little bit of like experience in all the fields so I can still translate while still being in front of it but I have to give away the power to the director and the DP and all that stuff so no definitely okay that's cool to know before we kind of um wrap up here is there any like last words of inspiration that you want to leave our guests before we close the show Ooh. let me think some last words of inspiration would be um I always like just promote enjoying your life and your moment and not taking things too fast. I, I love, I really enjoy like slow growth. Um, and I don't wish to shoot to the top like extremely quickly. I love just building and marinating and being in that crock pot of full of juiciness and flavor. <laughs> and, <laughs> instead of being like popcorn. I use this analogy a lot, but it's so funny. Instead of being a popcorn, we just pop up and it's, that's it. I, I really love, you know, marinating and, and growing slowly. And my mom always said the fastest way to eat is to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So I love that. I love that analogy. Listeners, you heard it first. One bite at a time. Yeah, take that one is bite at a time. Yeah, take it one step at a time and have fun with whatever that you're doing. That's what I recommend. I love that. That's some great advice for all the listeners. As you get ready for your week, just remember to take it slow. Trust the process. Thank you so much, Macy, for being on the show. We appreciate you and all that you're doing. I Thank you so much. You have an amazing platform, and I love what you're doing as well. You're killing it, and uh, <laughs> love. Thank you. Thank you.